I was doing some work inside and all I heard was some knocking, bang, bang, bang. So I come out here, this dude's got a hammer and a blowtorch. Hey guys, today we're gonna try to roll the fenders on the Civic, except I don't have a fender roller, so I'm gonna try to do it without one. If you guys didn't catch our last video, I'll put it up right here. All right, guys, thanks for checking out our channel. Oh, 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 we actually got new wheels for this car. We got a set of 1552 Integros? Integrales? Integrals? I don't know. We got a new set of wheels, so check out that video. We are currently running a five and a half, six inch wheel? Some sort of skinny wheel, and we're going up to a seven and a half wide wheel. These fenders have a little lip on them. In order to run the meaty tire setup that we want to run, we're gonna have to roll these fenders, or else it'll rub, or we're gonna have to stretch the tires, which I'd rather not do. So, today we're gonna try to do it without a fender roller. So, I'm gonna try to show you how, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then you're probably not seeing this video right now. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, now while I've never done this before, I have seen some YouTube videos, and I think this is what you're going to need. You need a couple rags or something saw, and then you're going to need a hammer. I have two kinds. I also have a bigger one. I might use one of those. And a couple heat sources. I have a little propane blowtorch and a heat gun. If you don't know how fender rolling works, we're essentially going to be taking this lip right here and pushing it upwards and folding it over itself. So instead of it being this thick, it'll be about this thin from here to here and that way our wheel will be able to tuck up in there and have more clearance. A normal fender roller is this device. It's an arm that mounts to the hub with kind of like a skateboard wheel on the end and it presses up against this and rolls back and forth and then you adjust the angle it articulates to press the fender in more and more. Now the thing about that, sometimes if you don't adjust it correctly, your fender will have a slight pull to it. It'll bow out if you don't do it correctly. What I'm gonna do pretty much is heat up this inner part of the fender with the torch and just put a rag around a hammer and beat it outwards while putting pressure here so hopefully it just folds the fender inwards nice and smoothly specifically on this car i'm going to take the heat gun and it has this weird rubber gasket molding thing so i'm just going to heat it up and peel it off and get rid of it also the reason why i'm so gung-ho about this is it's currently Monday. I don't know when this video is going up, but the car is going out to paint on Thursday, meaning I want to try to bash in the fenders or roll the fenders before Thursday. Because if you try to roll your fenders with paint, even if it's brand new paint, and you don't heat it up enough or you're not careful enough, chances are it'll crack your fender paint. So I don't want to deal with that. So even if this is rough when I beat it in, we could at least fill it up at the body shop before it gets painted and it'll look fine as a finished product. I just couldn't get access to a fender roller, so that's just why I'm doing it by hand, so hopefully it'll turn out all right. So step one, we're gonna jack up the car, so let's go do that. Alrighty, next up we're going to take off the wheels. Another good tip, if you're hammering under the car like we are today, go ahead and toss a wheel under there just for peace of mind. That way when you're under the car and you're hammering, in the terrible event that the car does fall over, that wheel will hopefully save you or at least give you enough breathing room to get out. I have two jack stands and a taut jack holding the thing up and I put my weight against the car and rocked it back and forth so it should be okay, but just peace of mind. All right, apologies that the exposure is a little off. It's dark under here, so I gotta brighten it up so my face is gonna be a little blown out. But you won't see much of my face anyways. Next up, we're gonna go in with our heat gun. My fender specifically has this rubber gasket protector thing. I'm just gonna heat up the adhesive and peel it off. And then after that, you're just gonna wanna clean up the whole inner fender area because obviously when you're rolling it, even if you're hammering it or if you're not hammering it, using a fender roller, if there's dirt in there, it's gonna pinch and show through the paint. There's gonna be dents and stuff, so. Yeah, you want to clean out all the dirt as much as possible. All right, now if you guys saw, there was a gross amount of dirt that came out of here. Um, so now I'm going to go in with some APC degreaser, all-purpose cleaners, water, soap, rag, whatever. Um, and I'm going to get out as much dirt out of this 
crevice as possible. This goes for just fender rolling in general if you're using a fender roller tool itself. You want to clean out as much that's in this ridge as possible because essentially what we're doing is we're taking the piece of metal and folding it over and pinching it to the other piece of metal. Now if there's dirt and rocks and debris in there, when you pinch it over, if you pinch it hard enough, eventually the other side is going to start bubbling out from rocks being squeezed in there and it's going to make this surface not smooth anymore. So you want this smooth because this is the part that you see. So get out all those rocks and dirt and then it'll look much, much better on the outside. So we're gonna clean that out and then we're gonna get to rolling, rolling. We're beating with the hammer. So let's do that. Alrighty, so I just got that all cleaned. Again, you're gonna wanna clean it as much as possible or else it'll show through on this edge and you don't want that. It does get kind of gross. It's like 30 years of road grime in an area that is never touched. So, all right, so next up, I'm gonna walk you through kind of the process or what I'm gonna attempt. So we have our torch and we have some hammers and rags. So I'm gonna use the torch as a heating agent. Obviously, since this is metal, you wanna heat it up and hopefully it'll become slightly more malleable so that you could pound it out with a hammer. I'm essentially gonna hold one rag on this side and hit the other side with the hammer in order to stop this from popping outwards and only moving the inner part. So I'm gonna start knocking up first and then knocking outwards so that it folds the two pieces of metal together. Another thing to note, um, while this ridge does go all the way, you're not actually rolling the entire part because you don't want to ruin this radius of the wheel arch. You want it to look uniform on both sides, obviously. So you only wanna do the section that the wheel is going to compress into. So that'll be from about here to about I'd say here. You can mark it off with tape but this car is pretty easy to tell where it starts and stops. So I'm just kind of going to freehand it and then we're going to go to the other side. So let's give it a shot. So we've got my torch. Flame on. Let's get it. The hairdo though. Sheesh! Gotta stay crispy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, it's pretty hard to catch, but I'm pretty happy with that. Honestly, before the fender used to go into like all the way here. So it's half of that now. Obviously I was using a hammer, so the paint chipped a little bit. It's old paint. So now I'm gonna go in with some underbody enamel, clean it up so that it doesn't rust, and then we should be all good to go. Should be able to fit much wider tires on here. You can see where the fender used to be at. Now it's right there. May have gotten some overspray over here, but uh, it's fine. The car's getting painted. This is overspray too. Well, not by me. This is just from previous body work. But if you could even see it, because it's black now, turn up the exposure a little bit. That is our newly rolled fender. Just toss some undercoating on it. As you can see, that's how it used to be. And it just does a nice little taper. It's nice and skinny. Sorry, it's hard to show because it's black, but trust me, I was able to take the fender down to about half its original width. So our seven and a half inch wheel should have no problem fitting under there now. And then worst case scenario, I got it started and we could just go in there later with a proper fender roller and smooth it out. But I don't think that'll be needed, so. Yep, now on to the other side. You can see this is what the other side looks like stock. So we're gonna fold that guy over. I hope this Bondo won't cause a problem. I don't think it will, but. But yeah, so. 30. Yeah, so that's how you roll your fenders without a fender roller. You can see that little like jerry rig thing. I wrapped a towel and taped it around a hammer so that I wouldn't scratch anything. So that's how you do that. We're going to go pick up some yerba mates now. I'm going to bring some. Uh, I think I'm going to take some up to the mountains when we go shredding, when we go snowboarding, because there's a lot of hardworking people up there that are helping to keep our resorts open and safe. And I want to thank them for that. So we're probably going to hand out some yerba mate while we're up there. Might try to film it. We're gonna have GoPros when we're up at the mountains. So if you wanna see that video, comment down below. And yeah, so let's go do that now. This passenger side, I'm gonna get back to that when we're back from picking up some mate. But for now, hopefully this video was helpful. And until then, we'll see you.